in honor of our three-year wedding anniversary. We made it, three years. Is that something to get an award for? <laughs> three years of marriage. I think it's like an inner reward. Oh. Yeah. An inner reward for what? I think that uh, I'm very proud uh, and can celebrate all the amazing memories and beautiful experiences and happy times that we we had together over the last few years. So I'm very happy. It's an That's award. That's really nice. Welcome to You're Allowed to Hate Your Husband, a modern day love story. I am Remy Stern. I'm a relationship coach, and we are going to talk all things relationships. From being single to dating to being engaged, married, who you marry is the most important decision you will ever make. If you're looking for a wife, which is a beautiful thing to do, the best thing to do is to choose wisely. If you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? Everybody else has it right. Then you are in the right place because trust me, nobody knows what they're doing. I'm so excited. Please hop right in, listen to this episode, listen to this series, and we are so excited that you are joining us here. In today's episode, I do something really embarrassing where I read a journal entry from right before meeting Jonathan. And I was in a place in life where I felt really down and discouraged and sad and lonely and very low confidence. It's true, it's honest, it's real. And Jonathan and I give that version of me some really good advice to pull herself out of it, to feel great, to live her best life so that she can feel whole and full and accept the right relationship into her life, which, spoiler alert, she does <laughs> that version of Remy. She pulls herself out of it. A few months later after that journal, I actually meet Jonathan. And then we read a journal from one year later, exactly one year from that date, when I'm dating Jonathan, we're about to get engaged, and you just get to see the power that one year does in someone's life. And it shows you how excited you can get for the future, especially if you put the right things in the right place in order to love your life, to feel whole, to feel full, and accept everything that you desire into your life. And Jonathan gives great advice. He says some ridiculous things too. So take a listen, have some fun. I'm excited for you guys to hear this one and enjoy. So what I what I want to do, and I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself right now because in this book are some of my deepest, darkest secrets because... I'm one of those like dorky girls who has um, journaled my entire life. And I have to be honest. You're too. an amazing girl. Thank you so much. What is going on? Let's make it our three-year wedding anniversary every single day. Tell me again. I'm amazing. You're the best. I love you. Thank you so much. I know. Anyways. So. By the way, I would not I would be a genius if I just had one of those. If I became one of these <laughs> dolls that you could just pull. Honey, you're number one. Honey, I agree. <laughs> Honey, whatever you want. <laughs> Honey, you're the best. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That all makes a lot That's of it. sense. That's it. That's the only vocabulary I need. It's brilliant, by the way. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. I am right. I'm going to make a doll like that. What do they say? Happy wife, happy life. Yes, I'm right. Yes, I'm brilliant. Yes, I'm amazing. Keep it up. I've never seen you smile this big in my life. <laughs> a great day. <laughs> I think I figured it out. Oh my God. Oh my God. Men just need a 60 minute class with me. I don't know what I'll charge them because it's gold, but it's very simple. You're right. Okay. Do you want to know a fun fact though? We're so Please awesome. tell me my love. So if you know anything about love languages, uh -huh. my love language happens to be probably, I have two, two really. But one of them is words of affirmation. And I love when somebody praises me. That's like, true. I love it. I love when someone says, you know, in my, not that this is definitely not why I do it, but in my business, in my coaching, when someone says, Remy, thank you so much for helping me. Mm -hmm. It just like solidifies what I'm doing. And it means so much to me. Like you can get me a gift for, th for helping you and I'm, I don't care, you know, whatever. Realistically, mine's, 
quality time, spending time with me and words of affirmation. But if you wake up every single morning and say, Remy, you are amazing and I love you, you can go play poker and go play basketball at night and I will be fine. Okay. Uh, we have that on tape as well. I can go play poker <laughs> as long as I give you words of affirmation. Yes. Well, then schedule me for every Tuesday night poker <laughs> and every Monday I'll put in my calendar to tell you how amazing you are. And Tuesday. And that everything you're doing is phenomenal. And Tuesday. No, but I, I, in all seriousness, I, I, I think you happen to be very happy. You have to, you have a happy soul and I think that I do as well. And when I'm out there in the world, running around, running errands, and you're just nice to someone, mm -hmm. pay them a compliment. You're real. Can't be fake. Or just like you're polite. You open the door. You you see that they're dropping something. You pick it up. And you do it with a smile on your face. Like you change them for that minute. Mm -hmm. you, you give them two volumes up in their happiness for that day. Mm -hmm. And they appreciate it. So when you get words of affirmation, I can totally understand. Like when I'm nice to people, I'm nice because it's the right thing to do. But most importantly, it's because it makes me feel good that I can make somebody else feel good. It's literally the best thing in the entire world. And it's so funny because I read something recently and it was like so simple and like it was in passing that said, what do you think the world would be like if every single person did an act of kindness every single day? And my first thought wasn't even about the person who's receiving the act of kindness, but about if everyone cared so much that once a day they thought like, let me do an act of kindness, how much happier would everyone be? It's a great drug. You it's do something nice for somebody. Yeah. It makes you feel good. Makes you feel great. You feel better about yourself. You feel stronger. You feel like you're having a happier day. Yeah. And then you want to do more. Yeah. You want to do more good. And then yes. you want to hug everybody you love. And it's like, it brings you back. It zeroes you in to what really matters in, mm -hmm. in your life. So it's like, you immediately start to like reevaluate, like, wait, wait, why am I doing that for the next mm -hmm. few hours? Let me go do this. Mm -hmm. Call your mom. You grab your daughter and you give her a big hug. You buy her a present. And you just sit there and play with her. You're more present. <gasps> It's the best thing in the entire world. You're right. And in, in, in every aspect of life, if you're kind to people and you give, it's it's actually in um, Judaism, the word for gave actually, but give, whatever, same idea, is Natan, N-A-T-A-N. And it's said that when you give, you receive, right? So the act of giving is receiving. And it's the probably one of the best advice that I got in marriage coaching per se, um, was that anytime like, you want your husband to do something for you or like you're, you're feeling like disconnected from your husband. Don't actually expect him to give to you. The most important thing is to give to him, like find something he loves to do, find some, some act of kindness, but like it helps the marriage. I've actually noticed right now I'm planning your 42nd birthday celebrations and it automatically makes me like you more when I'm thinking about doing something nice for you. Like it makes me like you more. Okay, I like that. Okay, so I but think. But it makes sense. It all goes together. But it also, it, it, giving is like a huge, what we're going to look at really is how to take yourself from a time of being like down and discouraged and maybe lonely and all of these things and turning it into an upward spiral and feeling good so that you can receive the things you want in life, right? Because you want to be on a plane of feeling really good for the sake of this conversation, to meet your partner, right? To meet somebody you want to feel really good, right? And I actually think giving is a huge aspect of it. But what I want to do is I want to embarrass myself and read my journal. And I have, and the reason I'm doing this is because I have a journal from right before I met you um, and exactly one year later on the day, because it's on Rosh Hashanah, I wrote myself a note. The next year in Rosh Hashanah, I wrote myself a note. And the difference between the two, because I was with you the next year, is really, really cool. And just what, what can happen in one year, it's it's unbelievable. But okay. I want to look at Remy when she was kind of miserable and not so happy. Are we ready? Ready. Okay, but I'm already embarrassed. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. Don't be embarrassed. There's only 5 million people on YouTube ah! watching this. <laughs> Well, don't judge me, everybody, but here we go. 10, 7, 18, okay? October 7th, 2018. Bravo. Hello, it's me again. I'm not very good at keeping up with this. 
Either I'm happy and I'm not in the mood, or I'm a little down and I'm not in the mood. But here I am. Unfortunately, I'm a little down right now, and I don't think for any apparent reason. I feel a bit lonely. I've never been this single for this long. I haven't even made out with a guy in so long. (laughs) I don't remember what it's like to lie in bed with a boy, have a nice one-on-one conversation with a guy, be touched lovingly by a guy. It's actually very sad. It's not that I feel unwanted. I feel like I don't deserve it. God knows why. It's a matter of worthiness. I don't know why I don't feel worthy of any of the guys. I'm going to skip all that maybe. (laughs) Um, And it says, and I'm sick of it. And I hate that I want a guy. Is it to feel worthy? Because then it's just a circle. I don't feel worthy of a boy liking me. So I want a boy to like me so I can feel worthy. I just want to feel loved and be loved. I'm in the mood. I think my job and my environment isn't helping. It's really bringing me down. I'm so happy for my sister, though. She's so happy and cute. I guess all I can do is focus on myself, do things to make me feel worthy, build me up. I need some self-love this week, maybe a facial one night, get my hair cut, go to the gym. I guess I trust the universe, just I really have to believe it and feel it. Love you, heart, Remy. So this is October 7th, 2018. I cannot believe I just read it, but ah, there we go. September to October. No, no, that this was October 7th, 2018. Okay. We met oh. we met January 15th. Okay. So October, November, December, so January. Three months before we met. Three months before we met. Okay. Got it. And I took this really amazing, like upward spiral. And you were really looking for a Prince Charming. You were really looking to figure some things out. I was really looking for you, I guess. So okay. were, you, were you Prince Charming? I mean, you could rewind the tape. You were, you know, looking. <laughs> You're right. And you were Prince Charming this beginning. I love you. You're cute. Anyways, so this is Remy, October 7th, 2018. I met you three months later. I'm going to tell you what I did to meet you, but I want to know, like, if you were to, you know, someone you care about. We're going to start with that for now. Someone you well, care it really about. just shows because... I I love what you wrote. Of course, I love everything that you do. It's so sad. <laughs> but I never wrote anything like that. Um, maybe when I was really like searching, yes, I also had trust in the universe. But wow, I mean, that was powerful. Well, that's very nice. You think that's powerful? I, I grew up with all brothers. So like I didn't get a sister who, who just like pulled me aside and told me something like that. Like we communicate differently, we think differently, we write things down differently. Of course, we might deep down feel the same way, but we just like, it just comes out through a different yeah. channel of some sort. Yeah, no, um, no, for sure. Yeah, I never wrote anything like that. Uh-oh. I mean, might have I felt that deep down? Sure. Potentially, yeah, probably, well, yeah. Good news. But this, I didn't ever communicate it that This way. is one of many wow. journals. Like, wow. I, I get my journal out. I write down who do I like on Sunday football, <laughs> who are my picks, no, 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 no. who are my bets, you know, my 10-team parlay, $1 to win $100 million, just one day, that's all you need. Oh, no, 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 no. You have no idea what is written down in these journals. Even though I'm looking for a wife and, you know, that's what I write down. No, this, this is, is what you write down. Okay. Got so it. the the funny thing about this one is it's actually my most like not thinking clearly journal and my most right. like word vomit because I was so sad. I felt so alone. Huh. I remember thinking I can't imagine a guy looking at me in the eyes and saying he loves me. Like I just can't imagine that happening. So I want to know because you and I have great conversations about this in regards to people we know, we love in general, that that Remy in 2018, what would you tell her to do to start liking her life and start bringing an upward spiral to then go and meet her person. Like she, she wasn't going to meet you here. You were not going to fall in love with her. Maybe you would have, of course, people meet in hard times in their lives, but, but this is a different Remy than you met three months later. So like, what would you tell this Remy to do in order to uplift herself? Um, I would tell you to, to be happy. Um, I think that, well, I would have known that you're an amazing girl, that you should focus on just finding joy in your own life. Don't stress, be thankful, be grateful for what you have, 
go out there, be smart, surround yourself with people that love you, surround yourself with friends and family that, that you love, um, that you trust, and enjoy, enjoy yourself every day. Do not trust, do not worry, have trust, have faith. Uh, he will come. Beautiful. And what if she's just sitting there and saying, but I get it. I get everything you're saying. I understand. I just still feel so down and I want it. I want it now. I want to, I want to meet my person. Like for, for us. So, you know, think, think Juliet for a second. Just we're going to, we're going to don't do- force it. It's not a time thing. You, you could meet him tomorrow. You can meet him in a month. You can meet him in a year. I mean, when it's the time is right, the time is right. But in the meantime, be happy, enjoy yourself, Um, smile, go and do fun things. Um, Don't stress. I love that. Something I I work with my clients on a lot because they come to me wanting to meet their person, wanting it now. And, And the funny thing is when you want something now, you're kind of telling the universe, like, I don't trust you to bring me the best thing, right? Because what if right now the best, 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 most epic, hot, cool guy is actually in a different relationship and he is needs to go through a breakup to meet you. But if you want it now, you're going to get the less good guy. You know, like if you want it right now, you don't trust the universe that he's sure. bringing you the right person at the right time. Right. And something I work with my clients on is I say, I'm going to give you a crystal ball right now. I'm giving you a crystal ball. And this, this journal is going to be a version of a crystal ball because you're going to then see when I meet you. Um, and you're going to meet your person. Literally, let's put it in one year from now. You might even be very close to being engaged like I was exactly one year from this. We are getting engaged very soon. So your person is coming. They're coming. They're coming. Relax. You see in the crystal ball. Would you rather now until then be moping around, be so upset you haven't met them yet? Or would you rather have a really fun time in life and enjoy your life? I um, Absolutely. I, I'd give an analogy. If you had a great party in your near future and you needed to to find an outfit that's a beautiful outfit you wanted to go buy a dress would you go across the street to target go grab the best dress that they have and put throw it on the register and that's your dress i wouldn't advise no i'd say go to bloomingdale's go to sex go to soho go online find something. Try it on. Make sure it looks great. If it doesn't look great, keep searching. Keep searching. In the meantime, exercise, eat healthy, surround yourself with fun activities at night after work that'll fill your soul. Go hang out with friends, have a pasta, have a wine, watch a movie, um, go to some charity events. If something just doesn't smell right, if something's not cool, don't do it again. It's okay. You live and you learn. But that's a dress. Imagine now we're talking about a partner for the rest of your life that you're gonna wake up next to, you're gonna spend all day with, and you're gonna to go to sleep next to, you're gonna share everything. Big decision. <laughs> your entire life with, you're gonna, you're with them 24 seven every day of the year. You're gonna build a family with them if that's in your cards, God willing. You're gonna, that's a big decision. Do you wanna just go to the corner store, swipe 20 times and just pick the best one or the one that likes you the most? No. Be smart. Take care of yourself. Be happy. And find the, find somebody that's going to make you really happy. It's beautiful. I, another don't analogy. Settle. It's I love that. So another analogy that I like because you're saying like don't just desperately, you know, I don't want to use the word desperately because you're, whoever it is isn't desperate per se, but like you don't want to desperately run across the street and just grab whatever dress is potentially the best dress in the place that exists, right? Like you want to, you said it, like pick your options, choose your options. It's like when you go into the kitchen and you're starving. Oh, you're when definitely going to pick a bag of chips, yep. pretzels, yep. ramen soup, yep. something in under three minutes that'll exactly, be in your mouth. Exactly, because you you need it. You need it. You want it now because you're not, right. you're, you're empty. It's, your, your taste or you could have empty. ordered a healthy salad an or, hour before or something. Exactly. Or tasty or, bacon. Egg, sure. <laughs> Whatever you say, my love. Sunday night. <laughs> Mark it in your calendar. Bacon? Yep. What bacon are you eating? Kosher lamb bacon from uh, the Upper West Side. What? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, there you go. Yeah, please specify for Ralu, my mother-in-law. <laughs> kosher, kosher. It's kosher, ma. But it's it's the feeling of like, and listen, this this Remy wanted a boyfriend. She had, in terms of my life coaching, the desire to have a boyfriend. And that's okay. You can have a desire. The seed can be planted. You could have, oh my God. I think single girls just have a boyfriend. It's just have a boyfriend. It's a it's a it's an invisible boyfriend. It's a fake boyfriend. It's a mental boyfriend. And then when the right person comes along, he takes that role. But until then, don't be desperate. Don't think you don't have like, go be strong, go be you. You know what I mean? I mean I'm like so proud of you right now because that's literally my entire coaching program is become the version of yourself who already has the boyfriend. Right. Like if you if you mentally wake up, literally pretend it's something that I, I do and I do in my life now for different things of pretend that you have what you want. Walk it's a walking manifestation. You're more, more thing. wholesome when you when you believe you have won. Exactly. You're like, okay, I have won now. Now I can go be a great friend, a great brother, a great mm-hmm. son. You know, exactly. I could spend more time calling people that I love and sh- you know asking them how they're doing. Exactly. You know, but so when that's... you like feel like you're you know you still need to win and then you can relax like. Relax. Exactly. That's Relax literally it. So that's what we say. We say, wake yeah. up and pretend like your boyfriend's either like on a trip or something, but you, your boyfriend's there. If you're out and about, you're Brad going Pitt. home. George Brad Clooney. Pitt is waiting for you at home. Pretend. He's, like just, he's just out for the night. Pretend. What, night. what would that version of yourself who has Brad Pitt out, like has Brad yeah, Pitt at home, what would she do? Would she walk tall? Would she feel beautiful? Would she put on nice things? Would she Chin be friendly? Up, happy, smiling. That, that oh, yeah. version of you is yeah. doing that. So if you pretend to be that version of you who already has the boyfriend, it is inevitable that the boyfriend is going to come and fill that spot, just like you said. Versus if you say, no, the version of myself who has the boyfriend is far off. She lives over there. She's far off. I'm not her yet. I don't have the boyfriend. She has the boyfriend. That puts a huge gap between you and the version of you who has a boyfriend. Versus if you start acting like her and you start feeling like her and you start thinking like her and you start being like her, guess what happens? That gap closes and you get real close to actually, actually being her, but the universe gets to bring you that person. So it's actually a life hack Mm -hmm. on anything you want. Pretend like you have it now and you will get it. Same thing goes in the man's world, which is everybody's like, when I'm single, I'm single. Like, you know, I can't. Oh my God, they all say no, or like, it's so tough. Or it's like, you know, they have a girl, they have a girlfriend and boom, every girl is like all over them, throwing themselves. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not the case. Obviously. It's just your mindset. Obviously. It's like every guy, a lot of guys sometimes say, um, you know, when you're single, you're always searching for a girl. But the second I have a girlfriend, mm-hmm. every girl is just mm-hmm. like all over me. Oh my God, it's the same thing. How many girls have hit on me in the last? Last night, it the last at your twelve hours. <laughs> at your grandma's five women have birthday? thrown themselves at me, and Through at Bloomingdale's, the checkout lady. Okay, <laughs> doesn't matter if she's over sixty years old. She threw herself at me. She said, "I want you to tell your wife no. that she's special, lucky lady, and that you're amazing." You she probably already knows that, you know. And then we kept talking. I do have a story of, and this really happens where you are single and you want to meet your person so badly. And then you meet someone and every guy is interested in you, right? So before we met during this time, Remy, in October 7th, 2018, a few people were telling me they wanted to set me up with this one guy, right? They were like, oh my God, he was so cute. He was so cute. I was so interested in him. I'd also like to just say that I think that when a, when a guy... And this probably applies to women as well. But when a guy is single and he feels like he needs a girl, he kind of feels like a little empty, like there's a mm-hmm. hole. If he has a girlfriend or he's married, he's like proud. He feels like he's whole. He's full. Mm-hmm. So he walks out. He'll probably get the same responses every day. But because he's desperate when he's single or just feels like there's something missing, he's not as confident. He doesn't feel as good. So he, you know, he feels as though he's like always like searching or whatnot. Compared to when he has a girlfriend or wife and he's he feels complete inside and happy, he feels as though like every girl kind of wants me. It's so funny. Once I have a girlfriend, mm-hmm. it's like they all want me, but it's not the case. It's just, it's all about how you feel. You, uh-huh. you know, so I guess that happens for men too, because that's literally the entire story for, for women. So just this is like my fun little story, but this this guy 
right before I met you when I wasn't feeling good. So everybody wanted to set you up? They wanted to set me up with this this one guy who was very cute, you know, good family, good situation. It, it was it was a a winner, right? They wanted to set me up and they'd be like, oh, can we set you up? Can we set you who up? Who wanted yes, to yes, set yes. you up? I'm not telling you the names of the people. Your girlfriends or family? No, like the community. And it would never amount to anything. So in my head at this time, Remy on October 7th, 2018, was like, oh, another guy isn't interested in me. Like, they definitely reached out to him. They sent him my photo. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm good. And I was like, and those are even... Oh, they wanted to set you up. You finally gave the nod. I gave the nod very quickly. I was like, yes, you can set me up. Oh, and the duder was just like... And he never... Was, he didn't He, he never didn't was jump. interested. He was never interested. And I was so upset about it. I was like, in these pictures of me, Michael by the Jordan. way... Michael Jordan. These pictures of me Busy were guy. such good pictures that they sent to him. And I was like... Obviously, he's going to like me. Like, I, maybe I didn't even look like that at the time. But, like, these were my best pictures. Do I know the guy? You will never find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know what I want for my birthday. I actually think you might be seeing him very soon in the next very recent hours. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the dude? Have I never told you the story? No. Anyways, he... Is he my cousin? No. 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 Maybe. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you with the hots? No. For no, a no. cousin of mine or a very good friend very of mine? Very possibly it could be cousin because that's your life, but it's maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Oh my God. And they, he's. So he, no, he, he never said, said no. He never but said he no. But he knows this for the last five years we've been married, three years, and he knows that he was <laughs> had the opportunity to date you and he said, nah, I'm cool. You know, we've never. But then I jumped on that. We've never covered the, the conversation, but. Although I found you. So it wasn't like somebody came to me. It wasn't like I'm second pick. It, actually, you kind of were. So he never reached out and I was so sad. I was like, oh my God. Another guy doesn't like me. Like, this is ridiculous. What is happening? So then I would feel worse about myself. So I wanted a guy. D downward spiral. Bad, bad, bad. Then I pull myself out of the downward spiral with all of the ways well, you gotta I did. have confidence. It's like, okay, if they're not for me, it's all good. Exactly. Not everybody's for everybody. And by the way, if you also got to think about it, because I once, like, saw a picture of a cute girl. Like, I guess I asked a mutual friend to set us up. And the mutual friend came back. I was like, I don't know how to say this, but they were... The girl wasn't interested. She said, no, you're not her type. I was like, not my type. Shocked uh, you know, admitting How this. am I not her type? Bop, 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 bop. But the honest truth is, three seconds later, I realized, you know what? All good. If she thinks I'm like either too religious or, or too sh too short, too tall, too rich, too poor, too, too dark, too light. I, I don't know. Whatever it is. If I'm not her type, all good. I didn't think you were going to be my type from your Instagram. I was like, whoa. This guy's not my type. But you surprised me and I you're gonna see obsessed. I still am, thank God, but I was obsessed with you. So also don't judge on the pictures because I was like, oh, these are very like posed pictures and I'm opposite. I'm like, I'm just not very photogenic, honestly. But um, okay, I wanna finish the story. Yeah, you don't wanna judge too much. Too much. You can definitely yeah. like you but see yes, a but you're right, but you're right. It it's it not paints about a picture, but. it's not about the guy like it being worthy. Like this is what I wanna tell Remy is like because you weren't with a guy at this time, because that guy didn't want you at that time, it's not that you're not worthy. It's literally just that he's you not your judge. person. You could judge. You get it. Okay. I mean, like, you see somebody's stories. Like, sometimes there'll be a misunderstanding, but you get a preview. It's a teaser of the movie. You get a preview of the movie. Okay, sure. Yes, whatever. But Once in a while, it's just a horrible preview, and then it's an amazing movie, or vice versa. Like... You, you're getting a teaser. Of but the you don't want to be too hard on the thing. Test. Like I, yeah. I, I could have been too hard and been like, no, I'm not going on a date with a guy who takes Instagram pictures. <laughs> Tell about me. Yes. What was wrong with my Instagram pictures? I had a very, great Instagram. They're very like Jonathan portfolio. Stern. They're very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked like a portfolio. Mine were like I was at dinner with my friends or we were on the beach and something actually fun would happen. Someone would actually- Mine was like a catalog. Yours was a catalog. Say you want to buy it or I, not, baby. I was not interested in catalog, but I showed up and you were the coolest, realest, most fun person in the world, which you'll see in a second. Going back, wait, first of all, I've got two parts. One is that, um, is that the, ver so the version of Remy, like we're saying, that the guy didn't reach out to, right? Took it as you are not worthy of this guy. When in reality, it just means that and now I know him very well. We're not meant for each other. Oh, my God. How do well do you know this guy? <laughs> Moving on. Guess what? We started dating, you and I. And we went to your cousin's wedding, Lexi, when we first started dating. What happened? He was there. 
he, every single person who wanted to set me up with him texted me after the wedding saying, oh my God, he literally is begging me to set you, him up with you. I you know him? No, you don't. You can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea. I know it is. All good. All good. Anyways, all good. anyways, anyways. He, the minute I start dating you, he was all of a sudden in love with me because guess what? I remember being at that wedding. I've never been happier in my life. I actually wrote about That's it. That's never happened maybe. to me, but this is totally natural. But totally I was, normal. I was like so happy. I was glowing. I was dancing. Your, I just met your whole family and we were all dancing in a circle. And I was just like so happy and having so much fun. Right. And if that version of Remy, the happy version, even without you, I didn't need you to be happy. I did it myself. But if that version was showing up in 2018 at this time, fun, happy, loving, it would have been, that's the advice I would give to this Remy is go have fun. Yeah. Go be. So so somebody, for whatever the reasons are, and probably very valid reasons, didn't jump on the opportunity. I don't know why. That's a little <laughs> Maybe crazy. Maybe But anyway, with else. that said, I want to see that picture. <laughs> that could be. But then saw, oh, wow. Beautiful, happy. I want. Yeah, you want it. Yeah. Too sure. late, buddy. <laughs> Good dude. Good okay. Dude. Great dude. You are seeing embarrassing. Anyways, back to the diary. So this is one year later. It's one actually year later. one year later, 10, 9, 19. Okay. So we're Got close enough to 10, 7. Two days later, one year and two days. The power, amen, of what can happen. One year later. One year later. So seven months after dating, moi. Yeah. We went oh, back. October. October. That's when I and you are starting to even potentially discuss marriage. Yeah, you got the ring very soon after this. Part of the story that we're, we're skipping in all of these pages is that I decided in November, so this was October of 2018, in November, Thanksgiving, I am turning this ship around. I do not want to feel like this anymore. I'm done feeling crappy. I don't want to walk into a room and hope a guy likes me Hmm. because why would I want my husband to meet me like that? Why do I want him to meet me when I'm hoping he likes me so I can feel good about myself? So I said, this is my whole story. I'm not dating right now until I feel better about myself. I remember one night that like I didn't even go out because like I hated every outfit I put on and I just thought and I was like no guy's gonna like me tonight I'm not even gonna go out and I was like damn oi uh-huh and uh, and this very typical I would say confidence I mean, was low very low I'd gotten bogged down a lot I'd been through breakups I'd other than you times. being happy any outside factors that could have potentially helped in life like if you had family if my you life had coach <laughs> Life coach. My life coach, life coach changed. Is great. Life my coach life coach great. changed the entire life coach, thing. Somebody for me. to speak to, somebody to connect with. Not even Absolutely. that. Just give give me the right system and the right order oh, to get system. me to where. I am. And she did, and that's what I did. And I stopped dating. I met her right before Thanksgiving. I stopped dating. I said I want to feel really good before I meet this person. I'm not going to meet him feeling like this. Start yeah. making myself good. I feel good. I would wake up on Sunday morning and maybe I, I went out the night before, maybe I didn't. Whereas before I was always out and I, and I still like going out. So maybe I was out. But one thing I did was I was like, what are the, the things, the activities that make me feel really, really good? Yoga, eating healthy, hanging out with good friends, exploring and doing fun adventures and going hiking and, and going to dinners, long dinners with friends. And Where you like order this. 29 pastas. Yes, yes, yes. So you could have one bite of each and then yes. stick everybody else yes. with 95% of each pasta to get time. fat. Okay. That, yeah. That's for a marriage conversation. This oh, is a sorry. dating. So I, so I decided to, instead of waking up and ordering bagels first thing in the morning, Sunday morning, I'd go straight to yoga and then I'd go get a healthy meal and like... I started to switch this and downward spiral. And you started to feel spiral. better? started feeling so much better. And I was That's hanging good. out with people who felt good. I wasn't on social media. There was a lot of things I was doing. And I, I would walk into rooms and actively not want to meet a guy. Actively. Be like, I, I don't want to because I still don't feel great. I, I want to be higher. I want to be at a higher place Exercise in my life. very. Oh, exercise was everything. Yeah, not everything, but close to activity. it. It's a happy and I, I started so pulling myself up and feeling really, really good. So so I did the work. And I think of it almost like a pedometer of when you fill yourself up. It goes real quick. You go ding, ding, ding. And that's when it notifies the universe. There's a whole one plus one equals one conversation about getting married. But we'll talk about it at a different time. But where 
then the universe is able to hand you the person. But the work, the inner work of pulling yourself up, which for me was with a life coach and many different things, but allowed me to get to the place where I met you. And then are we ready? We're ready. October 9th, 2019. Dear Diary, I'm sitting in my amazing boyfriend's bed. I've been reading my journals from last Rosh Hashanah until now. It's crazy what happens in a year. Exactly one year ago, I was in such a funk. I was so lonely, didn't feel worthy of love. I didn't even remember what lying in bed and having an intimate conversation with a guy felt like. I didn't know what it felt like to be touched and cuddled by a guy. And look at me now. I get to talk, hold hands, kiss, cuddle the best man in the entire world. (laughs) He makes me so extra happy. He is perfect. I am so grateful. He is handsome, smart, caring, loving, deep, funny, fun, exciting, calming, perfect. He loves me so much and I love him so much. I cannot wait to build an amazing life with him. He is my soulmate, my other half. His values, essence, path he's walking down are my dream. He is by far the best person I know. He has improved me and vice versa, aka I have improved him so much, (laughs) which is true. (laughs) In the end of the day, we make each other better. I'm seeing if there's anything else interesting. We have the best time together, the best love. Um, we've grown such an amazing bond. And then it goes on and on to talk about a conversation we had that's very cute. But the point being that, do you see all the difference in the journal from wow. one year? How wow. crazy is that? Yeah. The power of one year. So what does that, in honor of our three-year wedding anniversary, and now, because I've never read my book. That's my very beautiful. Really Thank like, you for those amazing words. Oh, You're no, the no, first no. person to ever call me perfect. I think you call yourself perfect every single day. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning, I see you in the mirror, you're like, hey, good looking. Hey, perfect. How you doing? I do good not looking? do that. <laughs> that is total fake news. I see it happening in your head, though. You're like shimmying at your I'm a happy guy. Like, you're just I'm very happy guy. in the morning. Yep. I'm working out, waking up feeling good. I'm excited to see my daughter wake up and run to her and give her kisses. I wake up happy. I do, I'm but so, I don't do that. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's, I will say something too. Like really a huge theme in, in this in our life is one, feeling whole and two, having fun and being happy. But I wake up with tears in my eyes of laughter every day because just the shit that you do, Jonathan, is so absurd, but so fun. Absurd. So I'm the absurd. Most sane person. Logical, so blah, blah, blah. filled with common sense person. The weird thing is... I always shit on you for things. And then you, and then you do it. I do it and you're right. And then you learn the hard way and then you jump on my and boat. I do it. Honey, jump on my boat. And then I read. I'm, I'm the most, like I sit and I read and I listen to podcasts and I, I go to courses, classes and courses and X, Y, and Z. And they teach me what you do. And I shat on you for it first. Still do. Like you pick your outfits for two hours at night for the next day. Why? For the next two, three days. So I don't have to Why? Why? I decide three seconds before what I want to wear. That's it. Three seconds. Right. Well, that's cool. I don't knock. I don't knock your style. You do what you want. Meanwhile, to do. a good friend of mine named Jay Shetty, he wrote a whole book about how it's great to prepare and know literally what you're going to wear the next day, what you're going to eat the next day. Which actually brings me back to one point that I didn't get to finish that I do want to get back to, which is when you walk into a kitchen and you are starving. Okay. You are starving. You haven't planned what you're going to eat. Me or anybody? Anybody in terms of Remy in 2018. Can you, you steal a little asparagus? Right oh, dinner? no. Not this story. <laughs> that was our first What happened to the baby asparagus? No. What? What happened you're about to faint because salmon fell on the floor and the cook is now going to have to recook the entrees and you say, okay, that's enough. I need, I need a little something. For context, this was our first fight when Jonathan walked by my on a family trip of mine when we just started dating. And he, with his fingers, stole an asparagus off of the plate. Stole is a big word. No, stole the asparagus. And I looked at him. I was like, grabbed. I said, what did he just do? And he turns around. He walks back. And he grabs another asparagus. I said, put that asparagus down. I love asparagus. And they were cooked a little crisp. They were perfect. No, I make the best asparagus. They're beautiful asparagus. And what am I going to do? Okay, so the point I don't want to eat is, everything at once. Okay, the dinner bell is rung three hours later. Now everybody's starving. And you have, oh my God, you have to shovel everything in. And this is a no, metaphor. I would love to have a little asparagus now, and then have a little fish later, a little pasta. Space okay. it out. Okay, so you're going perfectly with my 
with my metaphor of when you're dating from a place of starving, you inhale the food, you take whatever you can get, you don't think about it, you don't make the right decision of what you want to eat, you're you're fainty or these things, right? Versus when you're like, you know you're hungry, you're kind of hungry, you're ready to eat, and you you intentionally think, what can I make myself? You go in the kitchen mm-hmm. and you whip together a beautiful meal, you sit down, you so say plan, bracha, you, you schedule. You you get to yeah. be your best self when you eat okay. that meal. You get to yeah. be your best self. You sit, yeah. you take bites, you enjoy them, and you don't yeah. feel Timing. sick afterwards. Mm-hmm. You feel good. And that's that's the way that one should be dating is from a True. place of not starving, right? not such a lack of whatever is in their system, but from a place of- Give I me want- the falafel. Give me the pizza. No, no, no. No. Go find what makes you happy. And take your time. Slow down. Relax. Don't rush. It's okay. Don't force it. Enjoy the process. Enjoy right. cooking the meal. Enjoy the the recipes. Looking for the right recipe of what you want, like what you yeah. want in someone, what you want to eat. Talk about all this food. I'm I'm, I'm actually starving too. Should we what go make a meal? What type of podcast is this? Where's the pencils? <laughs> Where's the starving. chips? Okay, I'm starving. Let's go eat. We're going. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh to- <laughs> no no false call. <laughs> Why? Oh, we're not done yet, darling. Tell me. That's it? What else would you like to say? That's not it. Okay, so (laughs) I came here um, (laughs) to have fun, to enjoy. Thank you for having me. I'm your guest. You're not my guest. You're you're part of this podcast. (laughs) I I came up with my own little rapid fire just to add something of mine. Oh, my God. Uh, You ask all the questions, and I figured it would only be fair. It would only be... Nice. If I ask you a couple of questions. All right. Hit me. Okay. So if you could please hold this, don't open it yet. (laughs) And if I told you I'm Jonathan the genie and I'm granting you three wishes to wish for our daughter, Mm. please give us three wishes for our daughter. Oi. Every night I say in bed, please, dear God, please bless this girl. And I probably speak for 15 minutes. So I have a long laundry list of things I I want for her. Um, but of course, just exactly what we're saying. Like, I want her to feel like the most amazing, shining, light, beautiful, from inside out person in the entire world. So that no matter what happens, Tony Robbins says... Don't teach your kids, I think, how to be happy. Teach them how to be strong because life is hard, you know? Like, I I would love to pray to God, to Hashem, to the universe. Please, please, please don't let any hardship, no heartbreaks, nothing happen to my daughter. But that's not realistic. And it's going to break me, God forbid, the minute like a heartbreak happens or something like that. But it's not realistic. So I pray and I hope and I want Jeannie in a bottle. Please you know, make her strong, make her happy and light and full. (laughs) I can't choose a few and healthy, of course, always, always very healthy and happy. And I want her to have a lot of good people around her, a lot of really uplifting um, people. I want her to be able to give to the world, to give, give, give her main priority to be to make the world a better place. There she is. I hear her. her. That's a beautiful answer. If you don't mind, please open up the piece of paper and read it out loud. This was not pre-planned at all. What is this? Please read it out loud. Okay. Jonathan says, you are very blessed and you should always remember this. Because I allowed you to choose any three wishes in the world for your daughter and you chose wishes that you already have blessed. You already have been blessed with. (laughs) Notice you didn't wish for a yacht, a private jet, or a castle. You wish for health, love, and happiness. Jonathan, I'm going to cry. Jonathan, that was beautiful. Any three wishes in the world. I didn't hear yacht. I didn't hear anything like that. That was probably not even a thought for even half a second. You, for your daughter, who I know you love very much in this world, you, you wish for strength, happiness, Great health, and I think that's very beautiful. I hope they all come true. I'm in. 
But with that said, that I just wanted to let you know, because this is a levy by Remy and a levy by Jonathan as well. <laughs> you have those things, thank God. You have everything that you wish, anything in the world you can wish for your daughter. And you're picking three things that you thank God hold and have. So I'm very happy that out of anything you can ask for your daughter, you're picking things that you already even have yourself. So you should be very proud of yourself. Very mm -hmm. thankful that you're so blessed and fortunate. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. And it's funny because this morning we were running around the apartment and we were laughing and her laughter was filling up this home. And listen, we live in New York City and thank God a beautiful home. Thank God, thank God in, in New York City. It's a beautiful apartment. Like it's not, it's no yacht, it's no mansion. It's we're very blessed, a beautiful apartment. And I saw her so happy in here and it literally crossed my mind. Why would I ever want anything more or else like this is everything this is it and it's all about look at us go it's all about like loving what you have and recognizing how many blessings you have all right question number two you have to slime someone in the world right now who would it be you me? Yes, you. You're just telling me I, I, this is on a three-year anniversary, you're going to slime me? Wait, how do you Not, know there's nobody else you'd rather slime than me? How do you know what sliming is? That's from my Nickelodeon. Era. Nickelodeon. How do you know slime time? They had slime time in no. my day, too. But you don't know what SpongeBob is? No, I've seen the guy. My leg. I've seen the SpongeBob, <laughs> the guy that, you, uh, that people clean the kitchen with that you never helped. <laughs> Oh, you're funny. Okay, Anyways. me? You're picking me. Yes, okay. you're the easiest, Next question. obviously. Yes. For one year, you're going to have to choose either no salads, mm -hmm. no working out, mm -hmm. or no trips. <sighs> Go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to choose salads because working out is my favorite thing in the entire world. What so that's it. No mm -hmm. salads. Just no, pasta but with me for the next... 12 months. Done. I love pasta. I love pasta, but I love a side salad. <laughs> I know you love a side salad. <laughs> We're getting the side salad tonight at Casa Cipriani, just so you know. I'm ordering the food at No, no. Castor We're getting salad, too. I'm in charge. And pasta. And you get one hall pass to kiss one celebrity. <gasps> who is it? Who's the lucky dude? Didn't I have one recently who I had such a crush on? <gasps> Timothy Talamit. Oh, I do like him a lot. He's got a fun vibe. I'm probably not going to be him. I love it. He's a great... Your cousin has a crush on him. Yeah, she does. She had dinner with him. He stole his sweatshirt. Um, hmm. Hmm. Wasn't there someone? Ten seconds. The good news you is You lose your hall pass if you don't answer in the next five seconds. I mean, I really like the guy from Bridgerton. I think he's really fun. Which guy? The, like, tall, handsome guy. There's someone else recently who I had such a crush the on. The British? They're all British in that show, huh? Yeah, British. But there's someone else recently I had okay. a crush on. Wait. And uh, um, you picked Bridgerton. There's too many to pick. Just kidding. I can't, the good news is I can't think nope, of one. Bridgerton, that's it. So <laughs> last, definitely not least, if we time traveled right now and you had to live life over again for Remy Brenlinger, what would you change? I wouldn't change anything because it's all part of our story. And even my hardest times, I would not press delete on anything in my life or change. I would go back and give this Remy some advice. And thank God that's what I get to do with my clients now. And I would tell her to enjoy her year single a bit more and to not only enjoy, but like Embrace. Max, yeah, embrace them and sure. maximize them and actually like try to hang out in single years a little bit longer. Makes sense. Like I would have said, should enjoy it. You have enough time to get married. And once you're married, nobody asks you what age you got married at. All they all you talk about is like all of your fun things you did before you were married. You know, all these like fun sure. girls' trips you went on and like sure. So I would have told her, pack up your life with these fun girls' trips and yes. don't hold back on anything you do just go 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 have fun spend time on the couch with the girls laughing don't be sad and single like oh my yeah. gosh i'm single no have fun exactly. enjoy it because once you do meet the most amazing partner god willing that yeah. you get to spend the rest of your life with 
Listen, that's it. There's the single book is yeah, closed. closed. So enjoy it. Yeah. Of that's, course. That's what I would have told Remy. And I, I had a little stint right at the end where I started. And I, I enjoyed it. These were some, some of the best years of my life, this, mm-hmm. this journal right here. Um, I loved living in New York City, young, single. I loved the the loneliness and sadness too. It really was all part of the charm of it all. Um, but I would have gone back and injected a little more fun into it. Not that it, it had a lot of fun, a little I more. I could put on a mask and be your... Uh, the girls on the couch. <laughs> no, I was thinking I could be Bridgerton for Halloween. Oh, oh this is God. all you're thinking. <laughs> I'm going to get... No, I wasn't thinking about that, but I could be Bridgerton for Halloween. You could, There's I definitely could someone dance else. you around. It's, I mean, he's great. He's great. There has to be. He's great. There's a well, lot. thank you, Remy, <laughs> for this beautiful podcast. You You really are light. And you're real, you're honest, you're genuine, um, you're truly talented. You really do help the people that you surround yourself with and that you give your time to. I know for a fact, because you've been helping people for several years now, and the appreciation and love and gratitude uh, and thanks that they send you is like, life-changing, mind-blowing, and amazing. And you should be very proud of of these beautiful things that you do and all these amazing changes you make in, in so many great people's lives and how you strengthen them. You help strengthen them. You're there just as support. You're there just help them be who they are, who they truly are. Be as strong as they they are inside. Thank you for saying that. I love you. I love helping people become that version of themselves that they really want to be. They've always wanted to be. And and I love watching what people can do with their lives. So thank you so for tune supporting back me. back in next week. We got Brad Pitt and George Clooney as our guests. <laughs> hey, what about the Bridgerton guy? I don't even know his name. <laughs> Maybe there'll be a celebrity mystery guest. You don't get any of your hall passes on the show. Sorry. I don't get a hall pass? No. I already know who it is. I know but who you it didn't is. Ask me I know who it is too, and I, I don't want to ask. Who is it? It's not who you think. Cindy Crawford? No. Kylie I Kirkland. was never attracted to her. I thought she was stunning, but she was not my type. So who is it, Jonathan? 1998, Into oh. the Blue, Jessica Alba. What? Yeah. No, you also love Catherine She Hango. was my crush. You're really aging yourself there because I was literally like five. No. Into the Blue? I was like two years old then. Phenomenal film. They should have won an Oscar. No, also Ka- uh, Catherine. She should have got Best Actress. Catherine Heigl too from that one movie. Yeah. That what was movie? Good. I forgot the name of it. You love it. That was a great movie. Okay, those can the be your hot passes movie. because those are not great. Catherine Heigl now. Don't do no it. offense, hope if you're listening. I'm just saying for my movie moment, it's at that time in that. So show. let me think about it. I'll come the back French to you guy. online then. Oh yeah, that was good. That was good. Okay, well, thank you for my listening. father, the hero. That's oh, the movie. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, my father, the hero. I, I was in high school. Congratulations. I was like, little, why like, don't the girls in my grade look like this? What the heck is going way, on? And I'm sitting with my dad eating the popcorn going, oh my God, goo goo gaga. This girl's unbelievable. <laughs> I saw your high school girlfriend. She was cute. The one who was a year older than you. She's very really cute. cute. Not very a cute. couple of very yeah, you cute did well. girlfriends you did in well. high school. Bravo. Okay. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to You're Allowed to Hate Your Husband, a modern day love story. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope you liked it as much as we did. Now go send it to someone who needs to hear it because we know that dating, relationships, marriage can be tough, but we want to make it less tough. And remember, you're allowed to hate your husband. Whatever you're feeling is allowed. So go send it to a friend, to your sister, your brother, maybe your boyfriend, a husband, whoever needs to hear this, send it to them. And while you're at it, click the follow button, click the review button. Always feel free to reach out if you have any questions and we are so excited to see you in our next episode.